This is Rock and Jam Man is with Mackenzie Grant. How you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you? Good. You know, just chilling, you know, just enjoying life, you know. Good. So um, how's life been treating you these days? Life is good. Um, yeah, we're it's uh been a busy time of year and um uh yeah, just lots of good stuff happening. So for those who are watching and not familiar with you, can you tell us all about yourself? Okay. Uh, well, my name is Mackenzie Grant, and um, I am a singer songwriter. Uh, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, I have an album coming out on March uh, 18th. It's called Wonder World, and it's on Blackbird record label. I am, uh, I would say, a folk or Americana pop pop folk artist. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got a couple of singles out or one single out. I've got another single coming out tomorrow. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm a, I'm a mom. I have three kids and I used to also be a school counselor. Yeah. So yeah. We're, now I'm going to go ask you about this question right now. Okay. Okay. So you took 15 years off of being a musician to become a preschool counselor? Well, no. So I I was in the music business. I originally uh, was doing music until I was uh, like in my mid twenties. And um, then I really didn't wanna do, be a part of the business anymore. And um, I had a couple of kids and decided to stay home with them and be with them for a while. And then uh, I got very interested in working with kids and in um, mental health issues. So I went back to school, got a master's degree in school counseling. And so I was doing school counseling for uh, about, including my, my, including my master's degree, like five, like seven years. And then um, really uh, I, I kind of got burnt out. Um, I was working with really young kids, like you said, like preschoolers, um, and they were, uh, they had a lot of issues, they had a lot of trauma in their lives. And so it was a really hard job and um, I needed to step away from it. And I, I needed to kind of heal because I was burnt out and I, I went back to music and started recording these songs and um, ended up getting a record deal out of it. So it was, a, you know wasn't a planned break but it just kind of happened that way yeah because um uh in my school sometimes in kindergarten um I don't know about preschool I never really saw that much of breakdowns but um sometimes in kindergarten well when, when I went to elementary school yes there were some breakdowns and yeah it's a definitely gonna be a hard job because sometimes I can always see like them trying to retrain the kid to like get them mm -hmm. come here and stuff because yeah yeah, it's tough. There, I, I had to do a lot of that. Um, and it, it is, it's hard on you physically. It's hard emotionally. Um, so, you know, you just kind of have to take care of yourself in it too. So, you know, yeah. Is that why you went to uh, Berkeley for? I went to Berkeley uh, for music, for songwriting. Um, so I, I originally went to uh, the University of Michigan and I was there doing music and um, political science actually. But then I decided I really just wanted to focus on songwriting. So I went to Berkeley and, um, and that's kind of where I, I really focused in on, on songwriting and, and doing my own stuff. But in school is where you fall in love with music, right? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I grew up, my parents were both musicians. And so I was always surrounded by music and it was something that I was just naturally drawn to. Um, but I did do a lot of music in school. Um, my school had a really strong music program. Um, and, and then I, when I went to college, I, you know, I, I, I kept doing music in college. So, yeah. So what does a preschool uh, counselor do? Try and get kids off the bottle? <laughs> uh sometimes um you know it, the preschool counselor deals with uh a lot of social issues like when kids have 
problems, uh, social problems, like with their peers, with their friends in the classroom. May, oh. They might have behavioral issues. Um, they might, some kids have, um, you know, especially that young, they might have learning disabilities or different issues that um, haven't really been diagnosed yet. And so that was something else that I would work with families to help kids um, find out, you know, what they needed in order to be successful in school. And so that was a really cool part of the job was finding, you know, different people who could help kids um, get what they needed to, uh, you know, work through whatever they were dealing with. So. Did you, uh, uh, sorry, but did you ever cure any kids? Did you ever... I, you know, I think it's hard to say cure when it comes to um, mental health stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I think that you, you give kids tools. And I know I, I saw, you know, it was wonderful to see uh, such young kids being able to use the tools that um, I was teaching them, you know, with their friends at home, um, you know, ways to communicate with each other, ways to take care of themselves. Um, so, you know, it's, it's when you come to mental health, it's cure is, is a tough thing because we always have challenges in our lives, you know, so um, is, as long as you can help people find tools, that's really, that's kind of the, um, the key in the job, so. So you broke up with your husband and quit the music business? I actually quit the music business um, when I had my first child, my son. Um, and that's that's when I, I stopped. Um, but then uh, I, we didn't get a divorce until uh, we were married for about 11 years. So it was a while after that. So... Usually when there's a breakup, that is when the best songs are even uh, written, because that's why I think Fleetwood Mac would keep marrying each other and just keep breaking up. <laughs> they would always just keep, <laughs> they would always make the, it, you know, relationships and love are really, uh, they provide a lot of inspiration. Yeah. And I, I did write a, um, a couple of the songs on this album are, are about going through that divorce, um, which, you know, that's tough stuff. So, um, yeah. And uh, what made you want to come back? Well, I didn't really plan on a come, like a comeback, so to speak. Um, but I, um, when I, when I stepped away from doing the school counseling and I, like I said, I was really burnt out, um, and I really needed to kind of heal myself and take some time to work through what I was um, dealing with, with the kids, because they had a lot of trauma and, you know, there was abuse or a lot of things that I had to oh. kind of process. Yeah, it's tough stuff. So, um, you know, I needed to take some time. And one of the things that was important to me was finding, you know, good coping tools for healing and um, music has always been that for me. And so I just started writing some music and getting out my feelings that way. And it, it was really therapeutic for me to, to do that. And once I had a bunch of songs, I connected with a friend of mine who's a producer in Nashville here. And um, I said, hey, I just wanna record these songs. And he said, cool, let's do it. And then cut to, you know, a year later, um, uh, I, you know, signed a record deal with um, a label, you know, uh, Americana label. So, yeah. Would it, would it uh, affect you very personally, the job? Would it affect you very personally? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you train to, to work through those things, but... Um, I was in a very high need population um, of, of kids and families where there was a lot of poverty and a lot of disadvantage. And so um, it, it was just, it was a lot to see these kids struggling. And sometimes, you know, we didn't always have answers and that's really hard. Um, 
And so it's really common for folks who work in those kinds of situations to um, start to take on some of that trauma and you've got to just really be careful and take care of yourself, which is why I kind of, I knew I had to step away in order to take care of myself, but also, you know, the kids deserve someone who is okay with, you know, can feel okay with them and all of that. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what I did. Oh, uh, well, you had a really big gap with the lockdown and probably still with schools being virtual still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I am, I haven't gone back to, um, school counseling and, um, I, I'm, I'm actually hoping to go back this fall and I'm going to work with older kids, um, in a different kind of setting. So like middle school kids and, um, that's, that's actually the age group that I, I really love the most. And so, um, I'm going to do that in the fall, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've got three kids of my own and so they were, you know, we were all home during the lockdown and, um, you know, I was trying to help them with school. And so, yeah, I mean, we, I, I had a break, but during that time I was, I was recording the album and, um, doing all that. So it was, it was a crazy time. I, I, um, so are you going to be working with like fifth graders and sixth graders and stuff? Yeah, I'm going to be working with fifth through eighth grade. Are yeah. you doing it just to get the maturity? Because some kids like, you know, in preschool, some kids like 20 and stuff like, is it, that's right. why you're doing it as stuff as well? Is that why you're doing it? Um, well, it's, I, I like working with, um, that age group because I feel like um, there's, you're in middle school, you're really discovering yourself and becoming an, an individual. And um, it's, it's a really difficult time, but it's also really exciting because you're starting to form your own opinions and like your own views of the world. And I love being able to provide you know, a space for kids to feel connected to each other while they're still exploring who they are and, you know, making sure they know that like, they're not alone in the things that they're feeling and thinking. And, um, so, which it's harder to do that with really young kids, you know, um, to, and, and to talk about things on a higher level. And so you can do that with middle school kids. And, and I'm, that's, that's what I like. Your first single, Putting Down Some Things, had a really positive message they had. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, that song, yeah, that song is about um, me, uh, you know, trying to work through uh, leaving my job as a counselor and um, kind of a lot of the stuff that I dealt with there and also just you know, rediscovering myself and learning to be kinder to myself and how to um, you know, live in the world as a more honest, you know, version of myself. Was some of the things you put down what was uh, ever holding you back to make music again? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, sure. I think they were. Yeah, because, you know, um, the music business is really hard. And um, uh, a lot of times I think for artists, especially, um, when you identify with your art so heavily, if it's not accepted or you don't, you're not as successful as maybe someone else out there, you can take it as you're not good enough. And um, for me, it took a while for me to separate myself from music as what I do, as opposed to who I am. And so now, you know, I've as I've gotten older, I'm in a place where. I know who I am and um, my value apart from just whether I'm successful or not in whatever I do. And so I had to really kind of talk the talk and um, put aside, you know, my fears of how my music is judged or, or what people think or um, being rejected and just, just put it out there. And, and I did that. And um it really set me free to, to, to let go of worrying about all that. 
Well, this new uh, album, Wonder World, comes out in March. Do you have any big plans for the release? Um, well, you know, it's it's hard to say with uh, COVID. Um, I, uh, I'm hopeful that in the spring, um, I'm going to start doing some shows and uh, booking some shows. And a lot of things are starting to open up more. Um, and in the spring, we can do more outdoor stuff. So that's also good. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping to do, um, I don't have like a big album release party or anything because it's just, it's really hard to plan that far ahead right now with the way that um, a lot of the venues are like, you know, we just don't know what, what, what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I, I do plan on um, having some shows lined up for the spring. So that'll be fun. It has seven songs, and one of those is a John Johnny Mitchell cover. Oh, Joni Mitchell? Yeah. Yeah, Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, that song is called Borderline, and that's actually um, releasing tomorrow. So that'll be available on uh, Spotify and all those different streaming things tomorrow. So yeah, it's a Joni Mitchell cover. That is a pretty new song. Well, 1994, what made you choose that song? Um, because I love that album. It's, it won a Grammy back in 1994, but a lot of people don't really know about it. And, um, that song on the album is a song that is, uh, I think really powerful. And the, the message of it is very relevant to kind of what we're dealing with in the world today, where there's people who are really at opposite ends of spectrums and having a hard time letting go of you know their opinions to find common ground and that's what that song is about the borderlines between people and how um, we can lose sight of the fact that we have more in common with people than we do not and um you know that the, how important it is to find those ways to connect with one another when we're living in a time when really eh, so much wants to divide us did you know when writing the song, she said, was it about the terms of the mind? My country is in a state of division. Every province wants to be its own country. Yeah, Joni Mitchell said that. Yeah. 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 And that was back in 1994. So, you know, it just goes to show that um, those kinds of issues are timeless. You know, I mean, it's it's hard. People, uh, people, people find their side they want to be on. And, um, and we all have things that, you know, we believe in, um, but we have to be careful uh, finding a way to, um, you know, not, not make it so divisive and polarized. I like a uh, big yellow taxi myself. I love that song. Yeah. yeah. It's a great one. Yeah. She's, she's such an incredible writer. You just don't know what you got till it's gone. That's right. Yeah, she's she's kind of I I think uh, one of the the very best that's ever written songs. Now you have a song called uh, "Memo" to my sister. Is that a real song to your sister? Yeah, it's no, memo it's memo to my sister. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. yeah um, yeah, it is. It is a real song to my sister. My sister, um, I have an older sister who was diagnosed with breast cancer right before the pandemic. And um, she is happy and healthy now and fine. But um, it happened, you know, literally right before we went into lockdown and she had to go through a lot of treatment alone. And um, it was just really hard. But um yeah, so that song's kind of a, a dedication to my sister and about um, being there for each other and overcoming things that we've overcome in our lives, so. Well, your sister is well and uh, healthy now, right? She's yeah, she's doing great. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's one. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about what caused you guys not to be friends. Uh, caused who not to be friends? You and your sister. My sister, uh, we've, we've always been friends. Um, the, 
the song itself is 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 about um, kind of us being together and being able to get through things together as as you know sisters. Um, so, but yeah, no, we've never not been friends. So, I took it as a fight. The memo to my sister. Yeah. As a fight. Um. Like you guys got back together. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Um, it was a really about our childhood and how uh, we uh, had, um, you know, a lot of family issues. And so we were, you know, it was hard for us to probably take care of each other then. Um, but we, you know, we were, we, we never really had a fight. We, we were, um, uh, it's more about a realization of like, we, we've always had each other kind of thing. We've always, we've, we thought we were alone, but we actually always have had each other. Did, did she, uh, cool. But, uh, did, did she share the song or um, if so, did you play it for her in person? Yep. Yeah. I've played it for her and, um, she really likes it. She, I, she was one of the first people I played it for. So when I wrote it, yeah. So tell me about the messages from the rest of the album. Uh, the messages from the rest of the album are are about uh, I think being um, being authentic, uh, being able to tell the truth about yourself, um, being real, uh, uh, asking for help um, when you need help, uh, and about kind of loving yourself and um being open to um you know working on who you are um and accepting uh the good and the bad you know will they will there be more singles before it comes out yes so borderline is coming out tomorrow and then i have another single um little girl that's coming out uh in uh i think late february and uh then i have um one more all of this is is coming out as well um so they'll they'll be all those those two more will be out before the album release what was it like hearing yourself on the radio for the first time uh, it was really cool. It was fun. Um, I, I actually like ran and got my, my husband and, um, was and my kids and was like, look, listen, you know? And so it was like, yay! it was, it was really fun. Were you guys like, oh yeah, it was so big celebration party. <laughs> <laughs> Not that big, but you know, I, it's, it was like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. It, yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. Well, good for you, ma'am. Good for you. Thank you. Are you planning on doing shows this year? Yeah, hopefully, like I said, in, in springtime in March, I'll I'll um, be booking some shows uh, coming up, um, you know, around the album release. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'll, I'm going to have those posted to my website um, in the next hopefully month or two. So. You're in Nashville. Uh, Nashville. Mm -hmm. which is like the music capital of the world you can yeah. get a gig playing like somewhere every week and new fans because of all the tours yeah that's right yeah no it's a great place for live music um and i'm really lucky i know i there's so many places that um i love and ha have played and and you know uh, I love supporting. So yeah, it's a, it's a really great city for that. It's pretty crazy out there. It COVID is everywhere. It doesn't matter if you get the vaccine or not. It's what they're basically saying is that um, eventually everybody in the world is eventually going to get it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, this is really weird, but it's going to become our flu basically what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Yeah. And it's hard to avoid it. We, we had COVID a couple of weeks ago, actually. And, um, 
we had been so careful and um, we were all vaccinated and um, even our five-year-old daughter has been vaccinated, but um, you know, we got it and it's just this, the variants just really contagious. So it's, it's tough. The Omicron? Yeah. yeah. But you know, the good news is we all did really well and did not get, you know, as sick as, as folks can get if they don't have, you know, protection um, in, in form of vaccination and stuff. So it, it, I was really thankful at that point for um, how far we've come and being able to, um, you know, live, live with it. Cause it looks like we're, yeah, like you said, we're going to have to live with it for, for a while. Yeah. Before finally we can like act like it's nothing and it's like right. something ordinary. Yeah. I think we'll get there. I think we will. We're <laughs> humans are, humans are pretty amazing. We're pretty good at, you know, figuring things out. Eventually everything goes away. Basically sometimes, you know, sicknesses do just eventually just wander off the world if you could say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm in new york and they say like every one in five people have it wow yeah i don't know i know that um nashville has i mean it's been really really uh just running through every everywhere here in nashville the people don't really mask uh that much and oh, so do you mask i do yeah mm -hmm. but you know, in public places, you see a lot of people not wearing masks and it's, it's really, it's really frustrating. Yeah. It's just, a, it's a, I can get that feeling sometimes in my uh, area. I am um, in Buffalo. You can see a lot of people sometimes. And it's like, do you ever get that feeling where you just want to just say, here, just, here you go. Here's a mask. Just put it out. Yep. I, I do, but you know, what, what can we do? Yeah. We, just, we, gotta, we can wear our masks and set a good example. And, and hopefully everybody, you know, continues to try to stay safe as best they can. Does it scare you about thinking about touring? Does it, does COVID scare you? Um, a, I mean, a little bit. Uh, I think um, I, I'm now, I think I'm at the point, I think a lot of us are that um, I think we really need to try to get back to our lives. And so, you know, for me traveling for um, music, I, you know, I probably won't do a ton of it, but like, I'm probably going to go out to LA to, to do some shows, but um, that, you know, it's like, I, I'm willing to take, you know, that chance, um, especially since I am vaccinated and boosted and will continue to get whatever shots I need to get to stay as healthy as I can. Um, but I think it's really important that we don't, um, we, that we can't, you know, go about our lives um, more normally, so. What is your favorite memory from playing a show? Oh, that's a good question. Um, my favorite memory from playing a show. Um, well, there's a, there's a place in Nashville called the Bluebird Cafe, and it's really famous for um, uh, songwriters and singers. And um, so it's just like world known. And so I think probably doing my first show there was really fun and exciting and um, rewarding because you're kind of for songwriters you're in um, you know the mecca the the highest place you can go to to you know be recognized and so that that was pretty that was pretty great when I got to do a writer's night there. What is your worst? What is your worst? <laughs> oh gosh, my worst. <laughs> uh. Ooh, um, I, I played, I, I played in like a barbecue place one, one at one point and, you know, it, the people were just eating. It was loud. Like it, I kind of, I was the crowd. Yeah. And, but it wasn't, no, and nobody was really listening and I, my, my music really isn't like, you know, built for that. So that was, you know, kind of, uh, odd uh and um I, you know at one point I was like why why did I why did I get booked here because <laughs> it was just an odd fit um 
So yeah, I think that was probably one of the weirdest ones was playing at a, a, a barbecue place where I don't, I don't think they understood why I was there either. <laughs> Eating and listening to music don't go together sometimes. Like, hey, I can get you get like a fry and stuff, but like sometimes if you're eating like a full on course meal, I don't know if you could really like. Right. Yeah. 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 It was it was weird. Yeah, um, it definitely yeah. would be. What touring? Do you eat a lot of fast food? Hmm. Um. Well, I haven't toured in a really long time. Um. But let's see here. Uh. I think um, I definitely, I mean, you eat the food that's at the venues sometimes. And so I don't know if it's fast food, but like, you know, if you're at a place that has food or there's like a restaurant next door to it, you might run in and get a slice of pizza or do something like that. Um, so you just kind of eat when you go. I, I tend to, when, I, when I'm performing and stuff, I tend to get like, I don't get an appetite until after I've performed. So then by that point, I'm, I'm already done. I just, you know, want to go home and eat or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, tend to eat what, what they have there. So maybe it's fast food. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know what it really, I think like chef do cook it, but I think it's sometimes I've just thrown it in the microwave or in their fryer. Yeah. Yeah. Like finger food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what's your favorite place I know you eat, like you have any uh place that you like to eat sometimes when you're at a uh, tour like a Pacific restaurant you go to oh um well I love I love Thai food um so any chance I can get to get like Thai food I also love sushi sushi and Thai food or oh yeah sushi is pretty good yeah yeah so um yeah and you know it that's that any chance I can get to have um you know, different ethnic cuisines. I like Indian, Indian Thai and sushi. So anything like that, I just love. Where's your go-to um, Thai restaurant? Like what's your go-to order when you're there? What's your go-to uh, go order when you're there? Um, I really like curry. So like any kind of like uh, vegetable curry, um, red curry sauce. I love it. So is that a soup? Is that a soup or something? There I, I, is, there are curry soups, but this is like you put it over rice and it's got vegetables in it. Yeah. I know it's very popular with uh, Indian stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, thought it was yeah. a, I thought it was like a soup. Yeah, there are curry soups. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I like any kind of vegetable curry. I get you. Nice curry. I get this. Mm-hmm. If you could make your dream tour, who would be on the bill? Oh, um, let's see here. Uh, I think, hmm, can it be anybody from any time? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, yes. Um, you can, you can have an infinite amount of people too, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say, um, Gosh, and if I could tour with them, I mean, I, it would be like somebody like Neil Young or um, I love Jackson Brown um, and I love uh, Sean Colvin. So, or Patty Griffin, like any of those folks, um, you know, uh, touring with them would be amazing. Uh, yeah. Frank Sinatra, do you like him? I love Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Um, he's, he, you know, he's, he's a big, you know, he was a big standards singer, you know, ballads and things like that. And um, yeah, I love doing that kind of stuff too. What do you about think about Neil Young on Spotify? Leaving it. Leaving it. What do you think about that? Oh, um, I get it. I mean, I think um, there's a lot of mixed feelings about Spotify in terms for, for artists in terms of how it supports them financially. And so, um, you know, he, I think he's, you know, he's trying to make a statement about what Spotify isn't doing and in terms of royalties for artists. And um, I, I also know that he has the luxury of being able to leave Spotify because he's <laughs> real young. So it doesn't- Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah. And so, you know, for me, it's a community and I'm not seeing it as a revenue sor source at all. Um, but I know that it, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's a frustration and it's real and, and, you know, things need to change. Um, but because I think, you know, technology is, is changing so fast all the time, they're just struggling to keep up with how to protect artists and their royalties and make sure people get paid. And so, yeah. He left because of Joe Rogan. Oh, he left because of Joe Rogan. Oh, I thought it was because of um, the pay scale. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's his, that's his choice. You know, it's like the, um, he's very political. So he's, and he's always been political. He's never shied away from making statements about um, whether it's the Vietnam war or the environment. So he, uh, you know, I'm assuming he, highly disagrees with Joe Rogan. And so he doesn't want to be part of something that is promoting what, you know, Joe Rogan is, is putting out there. You gotta be, it just like, it's like, it's, you get, you can't really post that much about politics because you never win, no matter what, you'll never win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, uh, I mean, I think that there's a place for, advocating for different causes and for people. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's, that's his, you know, that's his choice to, to do what he feels is right for him, you know, and, and he has a platform, Neil Young has a platform, like a big platform to, um, you know, influence people. So I think he wanted to make a statement, you know, by that, by doing that. What do you do on your downtime for fun? Um, I, oh, I read, I, uh, I love to, you know, go running and walking outside. I spend a lot of time. I like the outdoors. Um, I hang out with my kids. Um, uh, I love listening to music and, um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I mean, and hanging out, with, we've, we've got a dog and three cats, so just kind of chilling out with them um, and just having fun with my family. What's next for you? Uh, well, I'm, uh, you know, I'll release the album on March 18th and then, um, you know, hopefully doing some shows to, to promote it and do some of the music from it. And um, right now I'm in the process of recording more new stuff. Um, so that's exciting. And then, you know, putting that stuff out. How do my followers follow you? How do my followers follow you? Um, you can find me at um, mckenziegrant.music on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'm Mackenzie Grant. Uh, if you go to my website, you can find all my social links there too. It's mckenziegrant.com. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can find me there. Well, I had a wonderful time talking to you, man. And I hope the next time we talk, stop backstage at one of your shows. Thank you very much. And peace. Thank you. Take care. Right. Take care. See ya. Bye.